and welcome to the new Greg Fernandez Jr. YouTube channel. We'll see how long this one lasts here, but it's going to be some new content here coming soon. Um, I have been on Crip Rick's show a couple times, his uh, decompression hour on Revolution Radio, getting ready to go live there here pretty shortly, so very excited about that. Always excited when we can discuss different things, and this time we're going to be discussing the Jurassic Park movie, so that should be interesting, and who knows what else we'll get into. I was on a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to play that one here for you now, so if you missed that, you can get catch the audio. Hardcore research and endless rabbit holes can start to wear on anyone. False flags, government corruption, mainstream media lies. It's a battle for humanity that we all must join. Now most people may think this leaves no time for the things they enjoy in life. I believe we can do both. So join me while we analyze music, movies, and more to uncover their occulted messages and meanings. Allowing us to still learn while we all decompress. I am your host, Crypt Rick. Welcome everybody. We are here. We are with another episode of Crypt Rick's The Decompression Hour. An hour where we just kind of show where I like to just sit back and basically talk about anything. It can be movies, music, documentaries, anything, gardening, the whole, it's its wide open, man. This is just a show where I like to do for an hour, and as it says, decompress, talk about any topic really is open for discussion, and uh, have a lot of fun doing that. We cover a lot of different things on here, and I did have a guest that I did have lined up for this evening. We were just going to talk about a couple movies that we were checking out during the week, but unfortunately, they got called, like they were called into work, and they're still stuck there, so I'm going to have to bring them for you guys uh, next Saturday evening, which I do apologize for, but hey, I mean, work's more important and it does happen, so we just roll with it here. And uh, just to let everyone know that here at Revolution Radio, it is listener supported. So if you are for freedom, freedom of speech, having a great uh, interviews with lots of people, and there's a lot of amazing hosts here at Revolution Radio, pretty much 24 7, covering so many important topics. If that's something you think is important and is support, then I think you can. It's a great place to put your money, and you can do that cryptocurrency if that's your thing. There's Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and if you're known and not into crypto, because not everybody is, then you can definitely go Patreon way, where you can lots of different dollar amounts. You can donate that way, and I think that's a really cool way because you kind of just set an amount that you're comfortable with, and it just you know Patreon takes care of it at the end of every month or whenever you set it to come out. Kind of just don't have to worry about it, and I think it's an awesome way to so, uh, show your support, and it's so helpful and a great thing to support and don't forget to shop i always push that too because i think there's a lot of really cool merchandise in there there's host mugs so if you have a favorite host you can buy one of their mugs there's awesome t-shirts something you can wear around show your support maybe get a conversation going if somebody asks you about revolution radio you can tell them all about it and send them here so it's a win-win i think so please check out the shop guys lots of great stuff in there so uh it's pretty uh, cool. I'm having a great... I just like to get out of the way, and uh, I'm having a great weekend so far. Weather is good. I'm just battling with a rabbit that uh, I can't seem to beat. I got a couple rabbits in my yard. As you guys know, I am trying to garden, and I am having a fight with this rabbit, uh, these couple rabbits, that, and I don't want to harm them. I don't want to have to, you know, do anything like get rid of them and stuff, so I'm trying to work with them, if I guess you can call it that. So, I mean, it's interesting, guys. Maybe somebody in the chat, if you guys are listening, you can guys give me some ideas how to humanely maybe work with them. I'm trying fencing, but I'm definitely got my guest here with me. I actually got a friend, Greg Fernandez Jr. I brought him on. This is so quick. I literally messaged him two minutes ago and uh, asked him if he wanted to come on the show. I'm not even sure if he's actually connected with me. It looks like he is. So I'm hoping. Are you there, Greg? I am here, my friend. How oh, are you? sorry. Thank you, man. This is so quick. I was letting everybody just know how quickly I messaged you literally like a minute ago and thought, well, I love having conversations with you, so I thought I'm going to bring you on. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. you. Know. I really appreciate that. Well, no, that's cool. Yeah, my guests, as I was saying, got caught at work, and they were messaging me like 10 minutes ago. They were like, I'm stuck here. Uh, they got called in, and I was like, well, don't worry. I mean, we roll with it. It happens. Life happens. 
So yeah, work work comes first, man. It yeah. comes first, right? Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm money. yeah, and yeah. I said we can talk about it next Saturday. The movie's next Saturday that we were gonna talk about, but maybe you can help me with this rabbit problem I'm having. I'm hoping somebody maybe in the chat that's listening can give me some ideas because I've been working. I got a rabbit, Greg, that is attacking my garden. <laughs> It is, we were we were talking about that last week a little bit. I can't beat him. I put a fence up and like this one fence. I thought this will do it, and he got around that. And it's a high fence, so I and so he's squeezing through somehow. So I've reinforced that fence even more. And I'm like so, and then but he's just like every day I I lose one bean plant. So I'll, mm. I have all my bean plants out, and then I'll go out in the morning to water them. And there's one plant stripped right down. And I'm sure anyone listening who's ever had an animal attack their garden you you just see like a stalk not a leaf on it just a stalk and i'm like oh my god so then next day i come out there's another one all the leaves are gone just a stalk so i don't want to shoot it <laughs> but i'm getting angry now at this point because i'm trying to be humane about it i'm like okay there's gotta be a way i can keep them out and everybody's telling me that there's not they're like you're going to be battling this rabbit forever because he's going to dig under the fence he's gonna if he wants to get to your garden he's going to do you have any suggestions that don't involve a rifle <laughs> um, yeah, I got I got a couple. I mean, you can always fight fire with fire. You can get you can get your own rabbit and see uh-huh. if uh, that will stop <laughs> this rabbit from coming into your to your area there. Um, <clears throat> you could set up a a uh, special uh, bean plant for this rabbit, and hopefully they will just go after that one. How much how much of the be- how how much does this rabbit eat? Is it one bean plant a day? Like they're they're just starting to grow, right? So they're only about a foot tall. They're only about a foot yeah. tall right now. And then they start mm-hmm. shooting their vines out, and then they uh, they the vines start wrapping, and then they climb up. Like I got like a nine foot pole, and then they climb up. I, I'm explaining bean farming to people in the chat, anyways. Whoever is listening, but I'm frustrated. I really am. Good. Yeah, like yeah. I'm trying to garden here, guys. I really am giving it a hundred percent. I got they don't seem to, and he's only after the bean plants, which is really weird. Like. And I planted probably about 15 or so. I'm trying to, like, somewhere around there. I'm not exact number. But, yeah, they're about a foot tall right now, and they're trying to shoot their vines out to start climbing. And then, so every day he takes out one plant, all the leaves. There's just a stalk when I come out. Wow. Wow. And, yeah, so maybe on a bean plant, I'm guessing maybe 10 leaves, like big leaves. So he eats those. And then, like, tomorrow morning, I'm sure I'm going to go out, and there's going to be another stalk. Mm-hmm. And a happy rabbit, and I don't, I don't <laughs> want. How about some rabbit food? Maybe if you entice it with some rabbit food, then it'll go <laughs> after that. I mean, you have you have options, definitely. Obviously, you have uh, <laughs> the rifle option is a, is one, but you know, <laughs> if you take him out, who knows? His family might come out. Well, that's what I was just gonna say with your you. feeding, with your feeding option. If I start feeding him, then he's gonna bring recruits. Interesting. I think he's well, going to tell the other rabbits, he's going to be like, hey, like the going's good. Like, and then they're going to eat the food I put out and then eat my bean plants. I know, I know one thing that works for rabbits because my wife, they had um, this issue, this rabbit. They, they heard they, in, in their backyard, all of a sudden they heard this loud screeching, the screeching, almost like it was crying or something. They went out there and their cat had cornered this, this rabbit. So oh. they have another option there if you want to get a cat. I'll tell you, you know, dogs, people love dogs, and I'm not a big dog fan, but cats take care of themselves. They don't need a lot of t- a lot of TLC. Um, they can be outdoorsy. And, um, you know, if you get a male cat, I wouldn't recommend it. Male cats are – they're just wild. <laughs> but if you get a female cat, you know, get a female cat, a chill cat, Um that may be an, another option too. That may stop this right. from. Have you it, um, have you set up any cameras or anything to try to see what this rabbit is doing? That no, I do another, have a camera though. I do have an outdoor that camera would be a that cool I got. YouTube. That it may will be some good YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, or and maybe like I'm assuming it's a rabbit because I've seen them at my bean plants. But I've also had somebody tell me that squirrels could be doing it because I do have a, like a few squirrels that are like that's the problem I'm finding with gardening and I and maybe people can let me know like I said I always read I always refer to the chat because maybe people know more gardening about me I don't claim to be an expert gardener never said that I've been doing it for a couple of years learning as I go and I seem to have a problem with critters and I don't want to shoot them I know a lot I've talked to farmers and they're like kill them that's that's their answer. Like that's all they say. Like I was telling you hunters. last show. <laughs> yeah, hunters are just like shoot them, cook them. Like there you go, rabbit problem gone. And I'm like, I don't want to do that 
but I also want to be able to grow vegetables. And they don't mess with the cucumbers. I got cucumbers, don't care about them. They ignore yeah. them. Got hot. I got uh, red peppers, green peppers, don't care about them. They just um, like the beans. Huh? They That's like the bean plants. And you I got think lettuce. About this, the stereotypes, it's always carrots. So it's yeah. Carrots or something like that. But wow, yeah. beans. <laughs> bean plants, yeah. And I got lettuce growing. They don't mess with the lettuce, which I thought they would for sure over the beans. But no, they lettuce is fine. It's just my bean plants. And could it be maybe a squirrel helping? I don't know. I, I've never seen a squirrel eat a plant before. That's why you need a camera. Yep. That's why you need a camera. I agree. Talk to uh, talk to to Steven. Talk to Steven Sam <laughs> Sam Barry. Say, look, man, you know, I'm not having any of these uh, you know, people putting spy cameras, but I need a spy cam I need to catch this, see what, what is going on. Because it like people said, it may not be a rabbit. You may just be blaming this rabbit for something that the rabbit hasn't done. Maybe. Well, I've seen him in the bean patch though. So I mean and I've seen them last year, I saw him actually eating bean leaves. But okay. it could be a squirrel, maybe. I mean, I do have a squirrels around here too, and that, and that, and how I got the squirrels in my yard was I was feeding the birds, which I love to do, as I've told you. I have a bird feeder, and I love feeding them. So we get a lot of different birds every year. We get the standard blackbirds, and uh, we call them cowbirds here. I'm not sure what other people call them. And then we get cardinals and blue jays, and then the chickadees. Like so, your standard birds that a lot of people see. But then when you start well, feeding the, the birds. Jays. Yes, exactly. And they're beautiful birds, especially the cardinals. Yeah. They're so red and the blue jays are so blue. They're beautiful. But wow. then you start attracting squirrels and they can get into the bird feeder. I, They shimmy down the little wire and they, they just empty the bird feeder. So that's another problem I'm having is if I want to feed the birds, I'm attracting a ton of squirrels and then it, my garden's suffering. So I'm just frustrated. I mean, this is a show of me being frustrated, guys, because I it's frustrating when you do, you pl you get your garden all set up, you plant everything, everything's starting to grow really good, and then as every day you come out, there's one plant missing. Mm. And you're just, it's just frustrating. And so yeah, there's got to be a this, humane way. This may be a plot between the squirrels and the birds to blame this rabbit so they can keep doing whatever they're, they're doing here. But yep. it does sound like if you set up a couple cameras... Um, at least, you know, set up a nice little bird cam. You can catch some awesome videos with these birds. It would be good for YouTube, yeah. You. That'd be fun. And then, yeah, That's and then great. seeing who actually is, a t like put it right on the bean patch <laughs> and just see yeah. who's the culprit. Yes, exactly. That would be awesome. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> a manifesto in the, uh, Susie in the chat, she, she's saying that squirrels are bold, and I totally agree. Bold, That's true. The squirrels I have are, they're built like bulldogs, like the way they're so muscular and big, at least in my yard. It's probably because yeah. they're eating all my vegetables, but um, <laughs> and the bird seed. But they're built like they walk like like a, like your typical image of a bulldog walking with those like big shoulders. That's mm -hmm. what my squirrels look like, and they're and they're bold. You can run up to them and yell at them, and they'll just look at you like, "What? What are you gonna do?" <laughs> well, you know, you know we have. We have squirrels that taunt our cat, so they'll they'll <laughs> hang on on the tree, and we just hear this ba 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 ba, and we're like, "What is going on?" And I'll go look out there, and the cat is just staring at him. Like, what are you guys doing? And and the squirrels are just like, like, does this squirrel realize you're, you're talking to a cat? They're they're pretty vicious. They can be pretty vicious. Like, you don't want to antagonize a a cat. Trust me on that one. And your cat's probably looking out the window, like, "Oh, if I could get out there." <laughs> oh, well, there be she's. She's like out outside the, the cat or I'm sorry, the uh, squirrel is at the top of the tree um, kind of inching down like the these squirrels <laughs> are brave, too. So I totally yep. get it. Yeah, they're really brave. But the cat is just like sitting there just waiting to just pounce, just like, OK, bring it, bring it. But, yep. of course, the squirrels never never do. But so I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you got um, I think you got to get some cameras out there. That's step one. Figure out what is really going on because we can speculate and we can blame the That's rabbit, true. but is it really the rabbit? That's true. And then see what's even more crazy, Greg, now that I'm thinking about it. I even raised – I thought, okay, what I can do is if I raise up my garden – so I bought these garden bags, and they're they're pretty big. Like they hold a, a large, large like amount of dirt. I'm not sure exactly – how big they are but they're like they're a good size off the ground they're probably about two feet off the ground these garden bags that i filled with dirt and that's where i put my bean plants the first time this year i use this is the second run i've planted but the first run i planted them in these bags and i thought okay like they're off the ground the rabbit is probably not going to jump up to eat them and they still they still got eaten 
like something actually yeah. got in there. So I planted again and then I put a fence, like a not a great fence, but I thought like it's not big enough for this rabbit to get through. It's the bars are not wide enough. And then I went out a couple days ago and a bean plant was cleared again. So I'm That's like, what, what is it could be a squirrel? Yeah, it could be a squirrel. Does, does anyone know in chat if squirrels eat leaves? Like I've never, I know they eat nuts and seeds and whatnot, but has anyone ever seen them eat le like plants? I've never seen that. So I'm just yeah, wondering. I don't know. Have you? Have you seen? No, I've eat? never seen. No, I've neither never have seen. I. <laughs> so I don't know, Greg. I'm just having. I just. I was so frustrated today. I was just like, I really am not happy with these animals and this rabbit. I mean, maybe maybe it's, maybe it's time. I mean, maybe it's time to give up on beans. <laughs> I don't want. To get, what am I? I can't live on cucumber. Like, geez, man. Oh, like, I, know. I got beans are like, so. Like we we pay a lot of money for a big bag of beans or yeah. just a, a can of beans. It's so freaking expensive. So when you started talking about that last week, I was like, hmm, I wonder if we could grow some bean plants out here. But we have a lot of squirrels. We don't have any rabbits, as far as I know. But we have a lot. So of you might be all right. You okay. might be all right then. If, and or do you have rabbits normally anywhere around there though? I don't think so. No. I don't but they'll show so. up. You'll know if you do because they'll show up as soon as you plant bean plants. I'm sure they're going to come out of the woodwork. No, we have ducks and geese and things like that, but no, I don't think we have any. Okay, any so rabbits. yeah, I'm I'm gonna definitely set up that camera to point it at the bean patch, just so I mean you can check out <laughs> who's doing it because you could be right; it could not be the rabbit, and it could be a squirrel or something. Yeah, and then you will have to uh, say sorry to that rabbit, <laughs> and blaming the rabbit the whole time, and all of a sudden, <laughs> well, the out it's man, the squirrels man. plotting. Manifestor Susie in, in chat saying that they're, the squirrels that around her eat they eat fruit, so they're like eating her orange plant uh, trees and stuff. Wow. I'm like, wow, they eat fruit. Interesting. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. Maybe they are. They're like a tree rat. My, that's what my wife calls them. She's like, they're just a rat a that lives in a tree. Rat. Yeah. That's so funny. We have, um, you know, um, I've been seeing um, these like bird feathers. And I know that there's squirrels here and there's birds here. And, like, all of a sudden I saw this, like, big mess of birds. I'm like, do squirrels eat birds here? I mean, what the heck is going on here? There, either there's some bird wars, some turf bird wars going on here, or maybe there's some squirrel versus birds. Or I don't know. I don't know what the heck is going on. But these, So just these a pile of feathers? Crazy. Just a pile yeah, of feathers, but nothing else? a pile of feathers, nothing else. It's like, okay, something's going on. And that's where our squirrels are. They, they have this little nest there, too. So I know it's, like, in their zone, but the birds have their nest over there, too. So I don't know what's going on. There's some wars. You need Definitely. a camera out there, too. Apparently. I know. I, I know. I, I do, too. Well, actually, I'm going to put a camera on my grass, which I just mowed, just trimmed, just cut. It looks great. Nice. Some dog keeps pooping on my grass. <laughs> I'm going to figure out who this dog is and we're going to have we're going to have some work. I'm not going to shoot a dog or anything. Like, it's not going to come to that. It's just grass. But it's just like, come on, man. So it must just be a dog just wandering around, which is crazy because I don't most most people here, you know, they they walk their their dogs and and if the dog poops, they they pick clean it, it up. up. Yeah. As far as I know, um at least when when they see me, and the dog does that. They clean it up. So I don't know what's going on. But so I, I got my own issues here, man, with dogs. Um, which Pooping on your lawn. Pooping on my lawn. What yeah, that's heck? not cool. That's not cool. Yeah, you're going to have to figure out who that is. It could be somebody just walking their dog. And then you got to be the guy to confront them and be standing there going, some, hey. <laughs> I kind of think it's some uh, uh, people that may not like me for whatever reason. <laughs> people don't like could be you, Greg. So there could be multiple reasons. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah. Not you, Greg. It's not like you have a fan club or anything. I got nothing going on. No, of course. Not. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's yeah. So there you go. I'll be filming gardens, and you're filming for a dog. Yeah. So right. it'll make for interesting YouTube videos, and uh, yeah, I just, I just really frustrating when you're trying to to grow food, and like you know, you're excited because it's growing. It's uh, I'm yeah. doing good. I'm getting it. The seeds are growing. They're growing healthy. And then, you know, you just see it start because that's what I was telling you earlier, like the beans will kind of get bushy and then they start. It's really interesting, actually. I, I can't believe I'm talking, making a show about beans, but it's really interesting how these bean plants, they'll they get bushy, like they get about a foot tall, maybe a little less. And then they 
bush out a little bit. Then they start shooting these vines out the top, and they these things are like sticky, and they latch onto anything. Like they start, it's like feelers that they're putting out to grow to get to grow up. So I, I you, yeah. So I put like an eight foot piece of like a stake I call it like it's just a mm-hmm. wooden stake I put that in the garden and then these feelers grab onto it and start wrapping around this stake like perfectly and it wraps like two or three wraps a day that's how quick these vines these feelers grow that's interesting I didn't know it they is grow that fast it's I mean, crazy that's dude cool yeah and that's like where it. the stage is at where I get to is where it gets bushy the they a couple feelers come out they start wrapping and then I come out and it's it's all cleaned right down to just like this green stem. So what 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 kind of beans are they? There's green beans different. and yellow beans. beans. Yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. And then I got and then I tried pea. I tried growing peas and they got eaten by something. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm kind of reduced now to I've turned my deck, which is a pretty big deck to be fair. It's off the ground. It's pretty big. I've basically turned that into my garden. I've I've been resorting to now buying great big pots. Of, and just filling them with the dirt and then putting them all over my deck because I get great sun there. I get the morning sun and then all day. So I've been just growing everything in on there on my deck because I'm like, at least it's off the ground. And it's maybe if it is a rabbit, it won't go up the stairs and find these plants, which is working, knock on wood so far. But anything okay. that's like, yeah, anything that's on the lawn or even in these grow pots are getting attacked. And you're not growing carrots. No, I, I tried that right. for two years. That didn't work. That they okay. got cleaned out. I think I've tried carrots. They got eaten. Obviously, uh, sunflowers. Something attacked my sun. I had a. I bought a sunflower plant. It was probably about three feet tall from the mm-hmm. nursery. It was like a. It was already well on its way to growing. I put that in a grow pot in my garden off the ground, and within three days, all the leaves were eaten off, and then they chewed the stem right at the <laughs> dirt level, and they they chopped it down like a tree. You got. <laughs> I'm not joking. I wish I was making this up, dude. I really do. But they cleaned, took three days, took all the leaves off the sunflower plant, and then they chopped it at dirt level, at where it was in the dirt. They chopped wow. it like a tree. They just, it was just like fell cold. over. And I'm not catching that's, who's doing it. That's Canada. Uh, that's, yeah, it's Canada. It's a really mean squirrel or a rabbit that I don't understand. I don't understand how they why they would attack a sunflower plant. Like, it didn't even have any sunflowers on it. It wasn't even flowering yet. And you haven't done anything to them to make it personal? No, no. (laughs) Oh, The meanest thing I've ever done, Greg, is feed them. Like, put bird seed out. That's my crime. How dare you? (laughs) Yep. Yeah, Yeah, and I got a good bird feeder I put out, and it's like, it's held by, like, really thin, thin line, because I thought the thinner the line, they can't, climb down the because if you use rope they'll just climb down squirrels are crafty these they're like really well good at what they do for climbing like it's amazing when you watch them but i have like just Mm -hmm. a thin like almost fishing line holding this bird feeder up they'll they'll shimmy down that little piece of thread and they'll hang by their back feet on the bird feeder like a vampire (laughs) bat and then Uh. they just do and then they just do sit-ups they do a sit-up they eat grab some food they stretch back down like a bat like you know a bat's hang They'll eat their food that way, do another sit-up, grab another mouthful of food. They do that till it's empty. It's incredible. So I don't know what to do. So I'm asking people in chat, what do you besides kill them? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. And I don't I, want it to so come to set that. Up, set up those cameras and keep us posted because uh, we, need to, we need to figure out what is, what is going on here. <laughs> <laughs> we got to find the culprit. Find the culprit. Okay. I'm just trying to think here. I'm just reading chat here, so I think somebody is giving me a. Okay, so. So. Like what do squirrels or what do rabbits not like? What would there's no scarecrow? What's the scarecrow for a rabbit? Uh, I think scarecrows are for birds, but I tried that last year. I stuck a scare. I bought a scarecrow, like a one at a garden center. Work. The birds no, I st- going, they'll go and sit right up. That's what they did. So I, st- I tried. I'm really, guys. I've tried everything. I stuck a scarecrow there in there within. Be, there must be something that or, or that uh, these rabbits don't like. You know what well, I mean? Well, I tried even a, like somebody said, get a statue of a ra- uh, owl, and put the owl up high, like on the edge of the deck over the garden, and they'll they'll see the owl and they'll know it's a predator bird, and they won't. That lasted about a week, and then they were sitting on the owl. 
Like, <laughs> and I'm not even joking, guys. I wish I was making this up. I, I can't even make this up when you go outside and you see a squirrel or sitting on top of the rabbit sta- or the owl statue kind of looking at you going, yeah, this didn't work either. And it, <laughs> And yeah, so what I mean, what else he got? What else he got? Yeah, like you're, I'm just reading through the chat here, so so I'm I'm just trying to read this. So ammonia, ammonia, or la, la, see, I don't have my glasses on, so raccoon kits don't get hummingbird feeders. See, I don't want to hurt other animals either, so I don't want to chemical warfare them. Um, so around trees for dogs, okay, trash cans between garden rows repel critters. Must reapply after rain. So something. Uh, half water, half ammonia, if I'm correct. On okay, so yeah, so I got to use half water, half uh, ammonia, and that I should just maybe get a work. Cat. Just get a cat. Go down to your vet. There's probably a cat that somebody left. Um, some cats that need homes, and just get a cat, man. That, that problem yeah. solved right there. Fox urine works. Now, where am I supposed to get fox urine? <laughs> Go down to your local uh, <laughs> your local liquor store. If they don't have it, and tell them, come on, man. Fox urine. Okay, if that works, I, I don't know how I'm going to get it. Maybe you can buy – you must be able to buy stuff like that, right, for hunters? Oh, yeah. They not, okay. There you go. Yep. I'm just, so, yeah, so that's your suggestion. Is first, we got to film it, find out who we're dealing with. That's number one. That's number one, and then we got to figure out a way not that doesn't involve a bullet or a trap. Um, I guess maybe I could live trap them and move them out to like the uh, the woods or something. Like, that's humane, I guess. You could; they'll still come back, I guess. But, yeah, it, it it may teach them a lesson. That may work. I mean, that's kind of like one of the last scenario. You know, one of the last uh, case scenarios. But yeah. yeah, well, that's what my brother had to do because he has a far- my brother has a farm and he had a, a family of squirrel uh, not squirrels I got a squirrel in the brain now he had a family of skunks living under his barn Ooh. and there was Ooh, a no. male there was two adults I think, I'm not I'm not sure if they were male or female but there was two adults and I think he said five babies that were living under there and he actually did trap them <clears throat> excuse me trap them humanely and relocate them which I found was amazing because he had a, a cage that you use to trap animals. And then what he learned on the internet is so you don't get sprayed by a skunk because everybody knows they spray. You just wrap the cage in plastic so that way when you have to go fetch the squirrel uh, or the uh, skunk after you catch it, you're not going to get sprayed by it because it's all, the whole cage is wrapped in plastic. And mm. it actually said it worked and he got he relocated, relocated that whole family uh, to another area like way out in, in a conservation area where they, he let them go. Oh, I just thought that was – that's interesting, eh? Like he actually traps – uh, skunks. And uh, yeah, you know, I was like, if it's a family, I could see that. But if you if you get this uh, rabbit and then it you it you try to relocate it and it has family or has children, I thought of that too. Yeah. See, we're putting to see like I'm caring too much. I think about this rabbit. This shows you guys how much I really do. I always tell people how much I love nature, and I really do. So I'm really trying not to do that because I thought that too. What if I trap the rabbit, relocate it, and it's got all these young waiting on it? And then I would, I would, you know, not that I probably ever know, but I still wonder about that. And I think I'm just, I can hear farmers now going, "This is crazy." Just (laughs) (laughs) you put them in a pot. You would never make it with us. Yeah. Oh yeah, you'd never make it with us, boy. Like we just put a bullet in that thing, and that'd be dinner, and then we'd have beans. And what's the problem? Skin it skin and hey, we got yeah, some, you got uh, yeah, you got mittens, you got mittens, you got a meal, you got beans, and so I mean yeah, it's a win yeah, but I I'm you just could wondering buy, you could buy about ten uh, rabbits feet and just hang them next to it and just hang one off bean. each bean pole, eh? Just be yeah. like hey, <laughs> this is what happened you. to your brother. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, so yeah, that was my frustration for the last since the last show is just me trying to build these little crude fences around my bean plants and it worked for about a few days and then one something got through um so and uh, i am i'm gonna put the camera on the garden and then i'll be able to give you an update good on who's doing it because i'm curious now i'm i've seen the rabbit though in the bean patch many times so i'm mm-hmm. as logically it would be him i've never seen a squirrel but you got to catch him in the act that's right yeah 
I can already see the video. Like, we can have the Mission Impossible music <laughs> going in the back when you see it creeping up to the bean patch. That would be a great video. I love it. I yeah, love yeah it. we could definitely do that. So that's cool. That's my story. Though, what have you been doing this week? Anything uh, besides work? Like anything <sighs> research wise? Um, uh, just slowly working on my book, on my COVID book here, and um, just uh, you know prepping, um, seeing what people are going to do. It's uh, the Bohemian Grove. Today is the first day, and uh, I know we have some people out there right now. I haven't heard anything from anybody I was there. I going to ask so, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to hear something from them soon. Um, getting some comments on the pages, on the groups, people thanking us for just going out there and things like that. But, yeah, so I'm curious to see, and hopefully uh, soon we'll have some That's more cool. Data. I imagine if there wasn't going on, you probably would have heard by now. If there wasn't going on, I would assume that you're – Friends that are there would have messaged you and said, "No, nope, there's nobody here." Yeah. So and there yep. must be going on then. I yeah, there's think. something going on. Yep, there's definitely something going on, and um, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next couple couple weeks. So I'll keep you posted on. Oh on yeah, that. that'll but be aside great. From that, yeah, not really too much. You got some great weather here, and just like I said, I was mowing my my lawn and doing a little yard work out there, and. Uh, so you're making a garden. Text. <laughs> you're gonna make a garden. You gotta make your besides your overgrown herb garden. Oh man, I'm I'm, I'm gonna have to send you a picture of, of our garden. It's 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 bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I, then, I, yeah. I just don't have time. I don't have time. For, That's true. Yeah, it really does take have time, time to mow my lawn and trim the trees and all that stuff. So. That's true. Yeah, it does take time. And, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, that grows on their self. But, yeah, you still have to take care of it, water it, weed it. So it does take a little bit of time, that's for sure. Um, and if you're busy. Yeah, we I got this. It. We have a lot of this crab uh, crab grass that I've yep. been fighting. So I've been kind of fighting that, which um, – but, yeah, no, it's good. It's all that's good, cool. Man. Yeah. Send me a picture, though, of the herb garden. I'll, I'm sure that'll yeah. be funny. <laughs> you know, and then I saw that you were on, you've been on Southern Truth uh, with Jamie, which was awesome. And you were talking about the the school shooting. I remember yeah. watching some videos on that. What is your? I, I've been watching. Yeah, I've just been really following what you guys have been covering on that. What is your take on that? Like just in general, what do you think? What's going it's, on? It's it's weird. The whole thing is weird. I mean, uh, his his channel got banned. I think he's on Southern Truth four. <laughs> so it's like, wow. Yeah. He, yeah, he's already there. So like. They ban. I think they were live because I dropped off and um, they were they were chatting and all, all of a sudden their stream just dropped. It was just gone. That's how YouTube YouTube just sucks, man. Can't even yep. talk about anything here. That's what I love about this station here on yep. uh, Revolution Radio, man. You could talk about whatever you want to. Yep. That's how it used to be. That's that's the reason why people join these these platforms. And now our our choices are so limited now. Um, but it's it's great. This, these people, the Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, they've never wavered on that. So nope. I mean, that's you know, it's it's always nice to have some somewhere where you can actually feel free to talk about these real issues here. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I agree. That, that whole school shooting to me, it's just like you know what. And let just let people know before you let uh, give your opinion, Greg. What the one that you're talking about? Because maybe people listening they haven't seen these videos on Southern Truth Three, so. What okay. school shooting and what the 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 narrative they're saying is what happened? Yeah, I mean you can just Google uh or not Google, don't Google Duck, 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 <laughs> uh, Texas school shooting. See, they they even got me doing it now. But um the Texas school shooting um which was at U Uvalde. Yeah, uh, I have school. trouble with the name too. I think yeah. It, yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, there's a there's a L that kind of sneaks in there, but. The, the thing we're getting more video, we're kind of learning more now, and we kind of look at some of this video. There's like there's a there's an 80 minute video that people should go watch and just watch that video, and you can see it's like wow, it shows where this guy's car crashed. There's a car that crashed. There's a couple people that walk up to that car. They run from that car. The guy gets gets out. He goes into this school. He shoots up this school. The police are just standing, standing, standing by. It's like they don't know what it, what is happening. This is why my view, you know, with with schools, like every school needs to have somebody armed. There's no reason not to. I don't understand why there's this big thing where it's like, oh, because this guy went in and shot up this school, 
that we need we need to take away everybody else's guns. That makes absolutely no sense. Well, it, it should be the other way. It should be, no, we need to arm more people in these schools so these things don't happen. And there's so many other weird things to it. But if you just watch that 80-minute video, and I wish I knew the title of that video. I'm trying um, to find it right now. I'm I think it's on – I think if you – if you uh, on YouTube, if you search for KVUE, school shooting, you'll, it will probably show up. Um, but it is just a weird, weird video, and it just shows – KV – I think it's UA? KV, KVUE. School. I think that's what, what it is. Or, or just, just look at Texas school shooting video. Okay, uh, I'll try that. Really pop up, but – yeah, I mean that video is so frustrating for so many different reasons, and it was just like, where was every everybody? Where were the police? And you know, I don't, I don't blame a lot of the police that were standing down. I think they were told to stand down. I think a lot of police had no idea what was happening, but the stories aren't adding up. A lot of the things that we've heard that we've been hearing, they're not adding up. It's the they're changing. The stories are changing, and that's always frustrating because the story should not change because the, the, the truth does not change. But for whatever reason, things are changing in this story, in this Texas school shooting, and their answer – this was the big thing, whatever they want to say, but their answer is to take away our guns. That's not the right answer because it's not about the guns. That's it's very true. I just put a it. link. Yeah, I agree. And I just put a link, Greg, to the video that you were mentioning about that, uh, about what we're talking about. I did find the. I did a search okay. like you recommended. I found it, so I put it in the chat for everybody. If you want to look at that video, if you haven't seen it, and you can just, I, I agree with what you're saying totally about, you know, why ban everything. And I was, and if I didn't get actually you on the show, uh, I was going to play a, a presentation by Mark Passio where he breaks down the. And the title of his is The True Meaning of, and Purpose of the Second Amendment. And I thought that would have been a great – it's only 40 minutes, and he really breaks down the meaning and the purpose of the Second Amendment. So that is what my backup was going to be if I didn't have you on. Nice. So I and, thought – you know, and I like, can put a link to that, guys, too. I can actually yeah. put a link for the – Mark if you want. And this is a presentation that Mark Passio does, and he, it's a it's a 40 minutes, as I just said. I just repeated myself, and I'll put a link in there for you guys. And I would check. I would really recommend you check it out, guys, because he really breaks down the Second Amendment. So I mean, really breaks it down and and the true meaning of it. So it's very interesting. And so Can I'll you put a link. It? Can you, I mean, like, what is? Uh, obviously, he obviously he's for it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, there's a link, guys, for that. This is the um, the Mark Passio one, the presentation. That should take you to that. And yeah, he just no, he definitely goes through like word by word, basically. Where he like and he get, he breaks down what the it really means and what they meant by it and, and yeah he's definitely for it hundred percent I can and uh, so I mean if you I can send it this link to you too uh, in our chat and then uh, if you want to check it out it's forty minutes I think you'll I think you'll even like it like you'll really get a lot out of it nice and so yeah that's what I was gonna play if I didn't have a uh, if I couldn't get somebody on to replace my guests on, on such quick notice which I uh, once again Greg I do appreciate thank you so much there was literally two minutes notice I gave you um, yeah I know <laughs> it was like you want to come on the show and you're, you're like when I'm like in two minutes so that was yeah. quick notice but yeah that's yeah. interesting about the police how they stood around and I know they're getting a lot of flack they are uh, they really for that are. video you know what do you yeah. what is your thoughts do you think they deserve it do you think they were just mm. not sure you know, what was going on they didn't want to rush in like i i'm curious i always like to hear everybody's at I like I, I think it's it's so easy to say what they should and shouldn't have done but that is a tough job man and you know there's obviously they are targets too um they are they have been targets for a long time at least here uh, where they want to get rid of cops, and then all of a sudden the same people that want to get rid of cops, when something happens to them, what is the first thing that they do? They call 911. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, here, the problem you have here is the re response time for those cops. But the second problem, I mean, for me, the bigger problem that you have here is that you don't have anybody at this school armed. That is a big problem, and there that is a worldwide problem. It's not a country problem. It's not a county problem. It's not a city problem. It is a worldwide problem. If your school does not have somebody there who is armed, 
who is trained, um, these things can happen, and these shooters target those areas. But I, I think the, the at the highest level of the police, I can I can see some of that. You know, well, you know, they were told to stand down. They were waiting, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But there's there's kids involved here. Right? Are you are you telling me that those cops wouldn't have really just went in there and just did whatever they needed to do? It just seems like. Un unless they were told at from the very top, we don't need to go in there because the the shooter isn't shooting now. Those are some of the most important things that we need to know because the the video, if there is shooting happening while those police are standing by and just you know if they can hear those shots. Yep. But the fact that they're not doing any anything leads me to wonder: Were there any shots happening during this video? Um, because this this works for people who want to defund our cops because it shows, well, look, they didn't even respond, so this is why we need to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. This works for people that support the cops. It shows, man, these cops stood stood down. This works on so many angles, but the, the problem is that the stories keep changing, but the video does not lie. So if you watch that video, I think people will be able to really see for themselves and kind of – Go, you know, just whatever you think happened. But um, for for me, as somebody who supports law in in enforcement, watches that video, it's like, wow, like there is a lot of things that obviously went wrong here. What could have been done to make sure that a school shooting did not happen? I I can't think of anything else. You could have a police that responds in a in a in a couple minutes. I kind of think that by the time that most of those police were there at the school, a lot of the kids were probably already dead. Mm -hmm. We don't really know, you know, but um, but if you have armed people in that school, armed staff members, armed teachers, I was wondering, like that's that what I was going to ask you. Have... What do you think about armed teachers? Like maybe teachers have to take a, you know, professional classes, learn their way around it. Yeah. How to handle a firearm with that deterrent? What's going on? This is awful. Absolutely. It's horrible. Like I mean, and I don't know the I don't know the answers. I don't think the answers. Everybody gets rid of guns. I mean, I don't think that's the answer. So, is it right. is it like what you said to stop horrible things like this happening? I can't even imagine what the families are going through, and it's it's horrible. So I mean, how do we stop that from happening? Do we? Like you said, do we have guards at the schools, which I think some schools yeah. already do? Do you have the teachers have to they take the course be. where they're armed? And if this happens, then at least I, would that deter somebody from actually using going? To I, would, I mean, like I went I went to a couple schools where they had one armed deputy sheriff. Mm -hmm. and, hey, we never had any school shootings. We had riots. <laughs> We right. had black versus the Mexicans. We had fights. We had people pulling guns. We never had any school shootings. There were no shootings inside of, of that school because there was an armed officer who was, was there. Now, they, the, the armed officer can't be at every school mm -hmm. at every time. So that's the other issue. But the, the big thing that stood out for me, the biggest red flag, and I'm sure everybody – Everybody should understand this. The biggest red flag is that their answer is to take away our guns. Right. So we we were already victims. The people were already victims by somebody who had a gun and started shooting at people that didn't have guns. And their answer is to take away guns so that we get shot more. That doesn't right. make any any sense. So that our our kids can continue to get shot by these crazy people who can grab guns. If that is what really happened, I mean, it, none of it makes sense to me, but it's just all the same thing. These people want to take away our, our guns, and it, it, I mean, from a logical standpoint to me, it just does not make sense unless, unless there is more to it right. where there is a reason why these school shootings happen. These are, are these programs. So when I think about computers, is this a program? Or is this a bug? You know, if it's a bug in a computer, my computer has bugs, your computer has bugs, and you fix those bugs. But if it's happening to every person's computer, it is a program. 
somebody is hacking it. Somebody is spamming it. Somebody is creating this. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. Okay. You, you know kind of lost saying? me for a second. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was like, what is he? <laughs> word? How do we get the computer? Now I get it. Okay. I get what you're saying. So, all right. Perfect. So that's how I look at, at these, these things. I look right, at it. Right. Is, it a, is it a program or is it a glitch? All right. And the way that how frequent the things thing are starting to happen, it's more like not a glitch. It yeah. doesn't seem to be. And and then what's shocking if you guys in chat do watch this video, uh that I the link I put for how long you'll see how long the police like when they get there, how long they're just waiting around, it's for a long time. Like it's really I you don't know, when you see it it's kind of really drives it home how long they just kinda of stood around and you know, didn't do anything. Like kind of just like in this holding pattern and it's for a long time. Yeah, it was like 72 minutes or something yeah. like that, like some crazy amount of, of time. So the, 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 the thing is, were they standing by while shots were being fired or were they standing by while there was this standoff happening? That's another thing we need to look at. Wow, yeah, because I know they, I definitely know that you guys have been doing amazing stuff over on Southern True 3. They're kind of breaking down it and going through the video and, and really analyzing it scene by scene kind of thing. Uh and that that's I think that's how you're gonna maybe get some answers, maybe or at least probably more questions as these things go. You're gonna be wondering even more um what's going on. Like it's it's kind of weird how it all even begins, how the guy goes into the ditch. And it's just weird. Like I remember you guys Nobody were kind of looking at it. Yeah, it's like, like because you were, I think you asked, like, why was he drawing? How, like, who was chasing him? Like, I know police were chasing him, but where are they? Right. Like, and then why did he drive into the the ditch? And that it's just weird. So, I don't know. How are they selling it? Like, what have you guys heard that they're just some crazy guy? I'm assuming. Yeah, just some crazy guy walked into a school, started shooting, and uh, yeah, and their their answer is to take away guns. Jeez. They 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 think guns are the problem, not this person, not who whatever he was involved in. You know, he shoots his grandma or something like that. That's first, right. So, You're right. That's how I mean, it's right. So many she, weird things that happen. Yeah, I'm sure you guys will even dig in more to it. I think that's what needs to be done, and and some questions asked for sure, which you guys have been doing, which is really cool. I mean, I like. I think that's what people need to do is start questioning things more right and looking into it a little deeper and not just believing whatever the news is throwing at people well and 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 also not just thinking that you have it all figured out either too you know it's like right. the more that that you see this this uh, i i think a lot of people who have been doing this for a long long time sometimes it's very easy to just say that you have it all figured out you've watched a couple videos you've seen other cases other school shootings so this is what what happened and you just stick to that you know, I, I try not to do that. Sometimes I do, but I really try not to because every every case needs to be treated separately. This is a it's its own case here, mm -hmm. whether it is a bug or a program, you want to treat it the same because you want to figure out how do you how do you fix this problem here with whatever is happening? So, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I kind of see it on on both sides where you have a lot of people. They have it figured out within a couple of weeks and they go on. Well, new video comes out later on. New data comes out later, but they're not looking at that because they already think that they have it figured out. Right. So that's very I true. Yeah. Both sides of it. So, yeah, that's true. Because more, as you're saying, more data comes out, but people don't go back to the story sometimes. They kind of think, I've already looked into that. And then they don't go back as new evidence is being uh, shown or discovered. Right. Makes right. sense. And that's. And there's and you know what we're being hit with so many different things on so many different levels. So I I, I get it. you you can't cover every case. No, you no. really can't. I mean I mean maybe if maybe there's some people out there that can't. Let me speak for myself. I can't cover every <laughs> case. Okay, I got a full time job here, but um for for me it would be impossible. So you know people ask me my my thoughts on this. You know don't be frustrated with with me. My view may change later on. Mm -hmm. I may think one thing now that may change later as new data comes in, as I look at that data when I have time, you know, right. but um, that's why they they're going after YouTube channels. That's why they're going after people who, you know, want to capture these things live, who want to talk about this stuff. That's why they're going after all of these people, because they don't want that data out there. Right. There are there is a huge 
power structures that just want their data out there. They don't want people to even think about, well, wait a minute, maybe it's not about guns. Maybe this guy was crazy. Maybe this guy was on drugs. Maybe it's it's some meds. Maybe he has some mental issues. Mm -hmm. But no, it's never about that. It's always about guns. It's always about taking away guns. Every time you see that, of course, it raises so many red flags. Yep. Yep. And then and that's the one thing I know will never change in your your opinion, no matter on any of that, is that that's not the answer <laughs> is to just take all guns away. That's not the way to go. I agree. Yeah, I think no that guns. It. We need more guns. We need people to be armed. We need people to under to use them properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I think it should be a part of school training. I think our students should be learning how to properly use guns. Our teachers need to learn how to properly use guns and not to be scared of those guns. Mm -hmm. I, I got into this thing about uh, with with a, a friend. We were talking about, well, if you take away guns, these people are just going to start stabbing. I mean they're always going to find some other thing. Taking away guns is not the answer. Guns right. are here. You cannot take it away. I'm sorry. Right. And even if they happen. do, if they, yeah, even if they try to take them all away, there's still so many out there now that a criminal is going to be able to get. If they want one bad enough, they're going to find one. Or like they can make them. Or they can make, yeah. Like, somebody yeah. made these guns, so why would? how are we going to stop criminals yeah. from making guns? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so sense. true. It doesn't make sense, right? And that I, that's why I hope people check out the presentation that I put a link for that Mark does on the Second Amendment. I, it's only it's a quick one, but it, at least he goes through it really, really well. And and I and there's a lot of good information in there where because a lot of people argue about that whole Second Amendment. I know that, so I thought, hey, so, well, so you were cool. gonna you were gonna have somebody on. You're gonna talk about uh, movies. What wh what movies were you gonna talk about? Oh, we were gonna be talking about. Well, I want to talk about the latest Spider Man. Because I just nice. watched that one, and I have I have talked about it a little bit, but I did watch it again, so I wanted to watch that one. And then the other movie I was going to uh, talk about was the dark uh, the Dark Tower from the Stephen okay. King. Uh, I looked at that again because I remember we were talking about that on a YouTube show, on Eric's show. We were talking about the yeah. the gunslinger, the the Dark Tower, and then the drawing of the three. So I went back and watched that movie again looking like I like looking for allegories and stuff like that. And it's, it's really cool. So that's what we we're going to talk about those series and that movie. And plus I wanted to talk about the Witcher series, which I don't think you've probably ever seen. No, it's on but Netflix. I do like, but I do like that actor because he is probably one of the, I think aside from Christopher Reeves, I think, um, uh, Henry Cavill is probably one of the best Superman. Very true. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he played that part so well. Yeah, yeah, I do too. That's what my wife was saying too—that she really liked him in as the Witcher in that series. So I, I thought I was just watching that because I think it's a cool series. So uh, yeah. I was watching that, but I definitely, um, like as have we were you, talking, um, huge Stephen King fan. Have you uh, looked at the new Jurassic Park movie? Have you seen? Not that yet. At all? I was going I'm to. Really excited about it. Okay, so you haven't seen it yet either. No, but, oh, but it, I was gonna it ask is <laughs> on on Prime. It is on Prime. You can order it. You can you know yeah, buy 20, it. Basically, ninety nine. I think it's twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, well that's here. even worse but then. So twenty nine is it worth that? Because it has the characters from the first three films, which I loved. I loved Me the too. first mo movie. So it's gonna have them, and it's gonna have Chris Pratt in it. I don't know, man. I, I, I think I'm going to spend that money, and I'll probably end up buying it when it comes out, too. So they're, they're going to get 60 bucks from me. Uh, yeah, I was, see, I was, still gonna, I was thinking about that today. Should I get it? Is it worth the money? But when I break it down, if I went to the theater to see it, it would cost me double that for me and my yep. wife to go. Then you buy popcorn and a drink, and then, you know, you're 90 bucks in. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, why not spend the 30 And, and yeah, so maybe I will. Okay, uh, but you've seen you've seen the last one, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so those last two or three minutes, dude, those images, that image of this guy surfing and this huge dinosaur in the in the water, like <laughs> yeah, that's cool. they just they they teased it so well. But then when I learned that they were going to bring back those characters from the first movie, I was like, yeah, yep, I gotta see it. I gotta see it. I gotta know. What okay, happened. so. So you got to rent it then, and then I'm going to rent it, and then in a couple of weeks, we're going to do a review on here. How does that sound? That sounds great. 
Like, and that'll give us a couple. I'll do I can't do it for next Saturday because I already have my guest that was supposed to be on tonight. I have them coming on next Saturday. So the Saturday I after that. Spider Man. I am here. Yeah. I'm curious what you guys think about Spider Man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then, so in two weeks, we'll, we'll watch the Jurassic Park. We'll, I'm going to splurge, get it, and then we'll do a show in two weeks. Nice. And let everybody know. We'll break that down and, see, and let everybody know what we thought. Sounds good to me. All right. That's awesome. So we got like a minute left, Greg. Let, I always ask you at the end, I always want people to know where can they find. Uh, all your videos and what do you got like anywhere that you want to send people the floor is yours i have nothing going on i've never done anything no <laughs> Just, uh, if, if you go to to greg fernandez jr.org or the you can find anything and everything that i'm doing if you look for greg fernandez jr wherever you're looking if you're on tiktok now i'm, I'm just started my tiktok thing which is weird to me but um wherever you you know that's where, where you'll find me i'll be there awesome. greg fernandez jr awesome right on yeah i always like to let because you do do a lot of videos so I, I always like to make sure you get your information out there and uh, people to check it out you cover a lot of different things you got books on the go so you're definitely between doing a full-time job and and then doing all the videos that you do i mean there's always so much time in a day right that's right my friend all righty well thank you so much greg uh thank the you everybody hunter. else uh, the rabbit hunter that's what we talked about today beans and rabbits guys thanks for joining me i will be back monday so join me then 6 to 8 p.m thank you so much greg thank you everyone take care see you soon and so that one was from two weeks ago, and uh, gonna get ready to play the one that just happened today. Hope you enjoy that. And again, thank you for tuning into this new channel here. We'll have some new content. Hardcore research and endless rabbit holes can start to wear on anyone. False flags government corruption, mainstream media lies. It's a battle for humanity that we all must join. Now most people may think this leaves no time for the things they enjoy in life. I believe we can do both. So join me while we analyze music, movies, and more to uncover their occulted messages and meanings, allowing us to still learn while we all decompress. I am your host, Crypt Rick. Welcome, everybody. It is another weekend and another episode of Crypt Rick's The Decompression Hour, the show where we talk about anything basically that we want music, movies, all kinds of things. And before we go ahead and get the show going, get my guest on, I'd just like to thank everybody who donates and who has donated to Revolution Radio here, because I always keep telling you guys, it is you guys who donate that allow us uh, people who host shows or create all these creators that are doing amazing work on here, bringing you incredible information and content. It is, you know, we couldn't do it without your guys' donations, and that I can only thank you so much for, because it is getting harder and harder, as I tell everyone every week, to get that truth out there and information out there. They just want to censor everybody these days, and they're making it harder to just get the truth out there. So anyone who has donated and who has donated, who is going to donate in the future, thank you so much because it is – we, you know what I mean? You guys make this all work. So thank you so much. Don't forget if you want to use Bitcoin, there is Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum if cryptocurrency is kind of your deal. And if not, then there is also Patreon. You can just kind of pick an amount that you want, and then it comes out every month, and you can donate that way. And I always point people to the shop, and I always will, because there's awesome merchandise there. Great way to show support for Revolution Radio and maybe get a conversation going. If somebody sees one of your cups or your shirts, you never know. And there is some really cool stuff there. Uh, host mugs, lots of cool T-shirts. So, you know, if you got time, please step, you know, when you're on this uh, website, go check out the shop. Lots of cool stuff there. I'm sure you'll find something there that you do like and uh show your support so thank you guys so much uh for everyone who does donate and who is you know donated as donated in the future so i wanted to get that out of the way i hope everyone's having the start of a great weekend i know i had a great uh friday night last night playing some music and that so that was a lot of fun and uh this is a fun show too and i'm just going to go ahead and get my host well my co-host i should say for tonight at least greg fernandez jr are you there my friend 
I am here. Thank you very much, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. Glad that you're here. We're, me and you were just kind of messing around with the new chat room here. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure stuff out and get it On going. The fly. On the, Yeah, literally, we did it five minutes before, which was not smart, but we no. figured it out. And uh, so how has your weekend so far been going? Dude, it's hot, man. It's just <laughs> hot weather here, but you know what? It's it's good. It's a it's a great day for people to go and check out some new movies. If exactly. there are any good movies out there, are <laughs> well, there that's any what good I, movies out there, Rick? You I don't know. Me. There might there might be there might be there are few and far between. But that is right. I did tell you everyone a couple weeks ago that I would be getting Greg back on here. We I gave him a couple weeks to go and watch the new Jurassic Park movie, which is World Dominion, and. I wanted to make sure you had time to watch it a couple times. I know I did. And then we're going to do this show tonight and give us a, let you guys know what we thought about it and all the ins and outs of it. So I'm going to let you go ahead, Greg, and let me know. I, I know you're eager to tell everyone what you thought of this movie. So you go ahead and let me know what you thought, and then I'll add in what uh, I'm thinking. I was looking at the actual numbers, and so we can talk about those later, but the numbers are not very good here. Okay, well, well let's start um, with the numbers. What are people thinking? Want- <laughs> what are, how bad is it? I was just looking this up, and it looks like uh, this movie has only grossed um, three hundred and sixty-seven million dollars. It's been it's been in the theaters for forty-nine days. If you compare that to Jurassic World, to Jurassic Park, and of course, you know maybe that's not the best comparison, but um, it's not. It doesn't seem to be doing very good by the numbers. Okay. Just by the numbers, so I'm very curious to see where this ends up at. Um, I mean, that's hey, 367 million for total gross. I would expect. I, I would expect a lot more. Now, now that's the, does it tell domestic. you what, the, what did the, Well, what did yep. the first Jurassic Park make? Does it tell you? Yeah, I was looking that one up too. Um, I, I just have that up here. I can so imagine what that brought in. Jurassic Park. Um, this is at the all time. I was looking at the all time worldwide box office, right? This is at number forty one, Jurassic Park, nineteen ninety three, and this has made um, wow one billion one oh. one billion one billion dollars basically uh, worldwide. That was a great movie. That's that was what I, amazing. I mean, that was the best one I think, and I've seen all of the Jurassic Parks. Um, I loved part one, absolutely loved it. Part two was okay. I actually, in the theater, I fell asleep watching part two. <laughs> it was one of the only movies I'd ever fallen asleep in. And I was like, man, I, I had so much high expectations because they, the Jurassic Park 2, all of the different clips, they kept showing us the dinosaurs and they get loose. And they're finally in these cities. And this is right. Jurassic Park Part 2. But it's at the very, very end. It's like two. It's a two-minute clip. It's really good, and it's probably. I think, unfortunately, for Jurassic Park Two, it's probably the best part in that whole movie. <laughs> and that sucks because I love those actors. Jurassic Park was a great. The, the very first movie had great casting. Part two um, only had um, what's his name, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Which I love. You know, he's he's great, but he he could not carry that movie on his own. Oh, Jurassic no. Park three, I thought was great uh, too, but a lot of people did not like it, and then it got replaced, and then we had um, uh, what's his name, um, Chris. Oh boy, help me out here, yeah, Chris, yeah, getting- Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, right. Yeah, so he was in four or five, and then this one, which is part six here. So I, I was can't like, believe wow, we're on six. We're on part wow. six. Now, where do we go from here? I don't know. I mean, from here, it's like, like okay, this has got to be it. We've had so many different movies here now, and they all end the same. That's the, yep. the, that's the worst thing. It's like, man, part this ended at part one. Now, this really made me think about the actual books. I want to go and get those books. I, I went to the bookstore. It's 40 bucks for that wow. first Jurassic Park. There's only two Jurassic Park books. And the first one is $40. I'm like, uh, and, and that's for the, you know, for the nice hardcover. You, you can get um, both of them uh, in paperback for like 20, 20 bucks. Okay. But if you really want to get it, you know, and that's just to, to just read it. But it really – after watching all of these six films, Rick, it makes me want to go back and read these books because I'm like, what did they get right in the films? What did they get wrong? The books are always better. 
I don't care. Oh, I don't care agreed. what movie it is. They're, the books is always better, but it does make me want to go and read those two books after seeing all of these six films. I know I, I watched. Not, I read the first book. Yeah. I know I read the first book when it oh, came out of paperback. Yeah. Uh, it, now to remember it, that was so long ago. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said I remember the book. So I'd like to go back and read both of them again too, which I'm probably going to do. Um, but yeah, I think I have to go back, like you said, and read the books because. And I agree with you. I, they always end the same, and I don't know. I I really don't know where they can go from. I say that at the end of every Jurassic Park movie, though. I'm like, okay, where can they go from here? And then they kind of do this story, and then it always seems to end back. You know, they kind of just always end the same. And and I just keep thinking. And I, every time I see one of them, Greg, I'm like, okay, now here we go again. Dinosaurs are out. They're gonna, you know, there's something going on. <laughs> They gotta go get them, and then and I don't know this one here. I I I'll just let you know what I think of the. Well, let's start with the dinosaurs because that's what everybody's watching Jurassic Park for. Let's be honest; they want to see the dinosaurs. I thought in this new one, I said it within five minutes to my wife when we were watching it. I said I think the animation for these dinosaurs looks horrible. Really? Like I didn't, oh, I didn't like them. I didn't like wow. them from five minutes on. I was just like, and then the, and my wife was like, oh, give it a minute. You know, she was like, you know, it's only five minutes in. But near the end, like as it was going on, she even looked at me. And she's like, I don't think they <laughs> did as good of a job as they did in the first one. I still say the first dinosaurs in the first Jurassic Park were the best. I, that's Is that my because opinion. they used, do you think because they used like the the robots? It was more I like, think so. a, like a like a Jaws. You know, it, it's a, it, the, the first one was a, a clearly a Steven Spielberg, it was like yep. Jaws, but with dinosaurs, right? Yep. It was really good. And I, I do want to say hi to Cass, who's in our chat room, too. Oh, okay. Thanks, Cass. Oh, Cass is in there. Okay. See, I'm not paying attention to the cat, uh, chat room. Okay. So, All right. You pay attention to the chat room. And yeah. You. I'm going to move my chat. I got too many monitors going here. All right. There we go. Yeah. I'm okay. I, I, don't know, I don't know if Cass has seen her or if she's um, watched any of these Jurassic Park movies, but... I had such high hopes, man. You have I, I loved the the first two Chris Pratt movies and I loved the first three Jurassic Park movies. There's something missing, something very different about this six one. You got you got everything. Everything that you would need for a great movie, Rick. What what was it that just didn't click? I don't know. I, I'm like you. I don't. I don't. I. I was like I. You know. You know where I'm already starting off bad when I didn't like the dinosaurs. Like I'm. A, <laughs> yeah, it's already. It, it's yeah. It's already I, downhill I, for me. It's already okay. downhill. Now, what I did like, and I'll start this off by saying, and I'll get your thoughts. What I did like about this Jurassic Park, which is kind of weird for me, is I did like how they kind of blended real life in it. And let me explain when I say real life. When they start with how um, they were genetically messing with the crops and they were messing with the insects, and which is clearly to me a hidden – like they are making it very clear that they're talking about probably like a company like Monsanto's in real life that's messing with uh, like GMO seeds and all of that. And so I like that part. I, that's the first thing I noticed was that they really hammered – they really were driving home the fact that you know people in the world are messing with – with genetics kind of thing, like with seeds and with the insects, making these insects uh, bigger than they should be and stuff, which we do know in real life that they are doing that. Like they're, they're constantly modifying mosquitoes and God knows what. So what did you, did you, did you, yeah, like did you, GMO food? (laughs) Well, that's what they were doing. They were showing that these insects will not eat the GMO modified crops and they were going around eating all the farmers crops that weren't, uh, those crops and that's what's happening in real life so what did, did you pick that up right away that was the first thing i Actually, noticed no no i didn't pick that up that no wow. i didn't really pick that up no okay so what i was so that's, i was i was too focused <laughs> on the, the villain and how much he looked like dr dr fauci that that's the first thing you told me that's the i was first thing i was told so, me. i was i was like oh my goodness like i i want to watch movies that are not based in reality at all. When I think about dinosaurs being cloned, that's what I loved about that first one. Like, this is awesome. Like, this is yep. a great concept here. And that book, that writer, Michael Christian, I'm probably saying his name wrong. Michael Crichton, I think Crichton, it is. Crichton, I but think, right. Yeah, he's done some, he's written some great books. I'm, I'm really shocked that I don't have any of his books on my shelf that I'm looking at right now here. Oh, great. That's but not acceptable. It's not. No, I, <laughs> I, I need to move some of my Tom Clancy books to the right so I can put some of his on the left there. But um, 
they just, I, I don't know. I had such high hopes and maybe my hopes were too high for this film. I love Chris Pratt. I love the people, the, the, those actors, the three actors from the very first film. That they had cool. no chemistry. The chemistry, when they first meet, Chris Pratt says, I mean, his, his literal words are, okay, that's it. And then they kind of move on. And then later on, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I have known you and I've seen, you know, and I've read some of your stuff, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted that story. I wanted the story between the three characters from the first three films and then these new characters, Chris Pratt and, um, you know, these, these other characters from, right. from, from these, these newer films. And they, they, it just didn't click. It did not mesh. It never felt like they cared about each other. I don't know. Right. There was something missing. The writing was terrible. There was this one black chick in there that she had no business even being in this film, <laughs> period. She like she the only reason she was there, I guess, is it, the only logical thing that I can think is because there were no other pilots. So she had to be this pilot, but she was just acting too tough. She just did not fit. And I'm just like, why is this character even here? And then nothing happens to the character. Usually a character like that, a dinosaur eats or something. You know, I was waiting not, for oh, that. Yeah, I, I was, was waiting, waiting for, that. for that. I was waiting. <laughs> I was like, I was actually kind of nervous for the for those three actors from the first three films, from the very first film, that they were going to get killed off. Right. So I was like, I was more worried that they were going to die than anything else. And now, what did you? Yeah. Well, what did you think of the start where they have the girl that is, uh, she's like cl a clone. They're kind of selling it as she's a clone, <laughs> and that she she's got the genetics of one of the first orig original creators of Jurassic Park. I mean, I, if and I know people that haven't seen any of them are going, what are they talking about? But you'd have to see all of them. But yeah, what did you think of that storyline where you got the two like characters? They're in the they're in the woods and they're hiding out with her and. Basically, then these people find them somehow and kidnap her. That's what starts his whole story on his journey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then for I, some I, reason, the blue, the dinosaur blue, followed like my, blue. which my wife said to me, I like, I love the raptor yeah, blue, but yeah. my wife's like, why would he follow that? Why? A, I, I couldn't understand why the dinosaurs could survive in the cold, snow, snowy weather, because <clears> I would think that they're tropical. That's just where my brain went, but. I mean, I guess you could argue that. And why would my wife was thinking, why did this dinosaur follow them all the way the, into like that territory? Like how did it just knew to follow them there? It was, so that was just a weird thing to me. Yeah, that that was weird. And how did they get there? Did they fly on a, fly on a plane? Did they take And how did the dinosaur get there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, how did they even get over here to where? None of that was ever really talked about. It's just like, well, the dinosaurs are just here now, but they're really yep. not. You know, yep. and it's like, well, if they're here, why aren't they eating people? Why aren't they going after cities? Why aren't they taking over? Why isn't the exactly. government just like shooting them down or bombing them or basically nuking them? It was just like none of it made sense. To me, it was identity poli politics. I remember you and saying that when you messaged was, me afterwards. Yeah, that ruined it. It Because I'm like, no, you don't need to. to you got a great you got two great storylines here. You have a franchise of five films that yep. you built up without the identity politics, but they had to go there, and they ruined it. They completely yep. ruined everything in this film. I, 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 told I, me that. I had a hard time. I had a hard time watching that. Uh, the, like I said, the villain is pretty much Doctor Fauci. Yep. It's, that's it. It's just it just made absolutely no. He comes out of nowhere. You have this girl who's basically a half of a dinosaur. She, there's a whole Jesus moment where, where she's like she she doesn't have a father, but the the mother gives birth to this daughter without <laughs> any. It's just it just made absolutely no sense. But it makes me. That's the reason. Another reason why I want to go back and read read the two books to see if there's anything in there. Because if they're part of the of the books, then okay, you know I okay. get it. Because at least they're staying true to the books. But this just seems like if this strays far away from the from the books where they're just creating these things where this woman can have a child without a father or anything and she just gives birth to just this one child. It's not like she's giving birth to multiple children or anything. She gives birth to this one child because she's half of, of a dinosaur or something. It just it made absolutely no sense. Yeah. I, I love the, the idea of where they mix the DNA where they clone. A half human, half 
dinosaur. I love that idea. I didn't like the idea that somehow that will make it so that uh, a, so that a woman can pro procreate without a man. Right. That bothered. So it was like these are identity politics. It's not what I want from a film. I want to go. I want to get lost in science fiction. I love it. I want to get lost in all of that stuff. I don't want it to come back to real life. It's just I don't know. There was just a lot of problems that I had with this film. Yeah, I remember you. I remember after you watched it, you, you sent me a list of a few things <laughs> right away. You're like, oh my god! And then, so I was glad that I wasn't the only one that that like I I didn't enjoy it. I I even watched it twice. I thought I'm gonna get, give it a chance. I'll watch it one time, and then the next day I watched it again, and it really didn't. I mean, if you like dinosaurs, I guess you could you could find a reason to like it, but I would you can't really focus on the story too much because I found the story just was kind of all over. Like they were trying to add all of these different things. Like they were trying to make it was like very busy, and to me. And then I, I like I said at the start, I didn't like the dinosaurs the way they looked, so I was kind of like that kind of ruined it right for me there. And uh, the story was just kind of, it was really, I think it'd be a good idea, like you said, to read the books to see if part, I remember the first part, I remember the first book a little bit, uh, the second one, not so much, but I'm really curious if they're following, following anything in that second book, like holding true to anything, or if they just kind of went off on their own and are just kind of like thinking this up as they go. But so what, what did you think of the actual story though? Like the story they were trying to tell where this girl gets kidnapped and then it starts off with all of them getting all the characters from the pre the first Jurassic park. They all come together to find this girl. And what did you think of that storyline at them trying to chase down and find this girl? Well, they weren't really the, the three characters from the first film. They weren't, right. they were just kind of um, looking at this Anthony Fauci person right. and trying to find out, you know, what, what he was, was doing. So it was more about these hornets. I don't know. What, what were those grasshoppers? Bugs? Okay. The grasshoppers. Yeah. So they, it was more about but that. they, like, gra- they were huge. Like these they were, they were, were huge. <laughs> but what does this have to do with dinosaurs? Well, cause what they were this? trying to sell like they were, that that's how it all started. Remember I was telling you about how they were genetically modifying the, the bugs and the crops and stuff like that. Right, so right. that's, that's where, not that a was, Jurassic Park mo- That's not a movie about dinosaurs. That's not the dinosaurs taking over. That's these giant grasshoppers taking right. over. Yeah, so even that, even the dinosaurs don't even get to be, you know, the, the main characters in their right. own film. In a film <laughs> that's supposed to be all about dinosaurs taking over this planet, they don't even do that. They're yep. playing third fiddle. You have the grasshoppers, then you have humans, then the dinosaurs are just kind of there. Yep, And the exactly. humans are just kind of there. And these grasshoppers are like this big thing that nobody cares about. We didn't come to see a Jurassic Park movie to watch grasshoppers. Yep. We came to see dinosaurs fighting humans, eating humans and humans fighting back and how they deal with it and et cetera, et cetera. Yep. That's so what that, I wanted to see. Well, that's because uh, like, that was because the, the, the grasshoppers, they were trying to tie in because that's with this Fauci character, I'm going to call him. He yeah. is working in that <laughs> island or wherever they like every I just I laugh too at every Jurassic Park movie. They, they're like, we can't have these uh, dinosaurs in captivity. We have to learn how to live with them. And then the next movie, they got another secret location where they got dinosaurs. And then that next movie, they got another secret location. And it was the same with this one. Another secret location where they got dinosaurs and they're trying to, you know, raise them and, and protect them, which they, they always say. And so that's why they kind of brought the grasshopper thing it was because this guy that was taking care of the dinosaurs and trying to uh you know, study them for genetic reasons and for cures for humans and all of this stuff that's what they kind of touch on it's but he's got this yeah he's got this evil plan though where he's making these grasshoppers that are going to destroy which all the could crops have, which could have been a bat right it yeah, could have well, been, been the coronavirus bat where the bat you know bat bat soup started and everything it could have been anything but it couldn't it couldn't that have been from a dinosaur too maybe like why not just have it be from some dinosaur that can also fly yeah. there's the the terra terra pterodactyl yep which which we saw like at the end of part two they hint you know they show them in part three but it's like if they're out there why aren't they just taking over everything well they did you show have- them in this movie they did show them if you remember they showed at the beginning which yeah. is kind of weird because this is where they kind of messed up at the beginning i noticed right away that they said that there is certain there is dinosaurs living amongst people and you see one of these pterodactyls 
fly into a nest. I don't even know if you remember this, but it's at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, don't they go? Don't they go on top of the World Trade Center? Yeah, and they're yeah, they, and they got a nest, nest up top there. Of the world. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah but then that. when yeah, the movie's right. going on, when they're flying, when that uh, pilot's flying the plane and it gets attacked by the flying dinosaurs, it's because this protective grid is down that uh, won't let these flying dinosaurs attack the planes or something. It was really weird. They didn't really explain oh, it. So they're radiating them. They're doing something, but yeah, something. That it's yeah, it's either that they I, they didn't really explain it. With this the signal, did it stop them from leaving the area of this compound, like this new fortress where the dinos, this evil guy was making these grasshoppers and studying dinosaurs, <laughs> or was it who, that, the, who makes grasshoppers? <laughs> I don't big grasshoppers, like huge okay, grasshoppers big, to boot. Okay. So, like yeah, murder. so you kind of see the pterodactyls in the beginning, which yeah. says that they're living amongst humans, and then they kind of touch on that they're trying to keep the flying dinosaurs at bay because they'll attack the planes. So I don't know what – I guess okay. they didn't think that far. Yeah, they, I, I don't know. It's, it's just a, a lot of the stuff to me made no sense. It was just like they were trying to – they were trying too hard with the identity stuff, with the whole woke culture. They were trying too hard with that. Instead of just make a good movie, I, I mean, agree. you had everything there. The, the look at look at the first movie. All, all You'll you never had, beat it. Yep. I mean, it was it was so great. You had you had Newman, you had Samuel L. Jackson, and you had a, just a great cast, and they all get killed. That's what we want to see. We want to see how humans and these these dinosaurs, these clone dinosaurs, how they deal with each other. You had a great chance here to show that on a global scale, and they mm -hmm. they just totally dropped the ball. I think. Yeah. And this Don, like on the new movie, they did show like dinosaurs living in all areas of the world. Like so, they were trying to hint that dinosaurs are uh, roaming like wild in the in in the world. Uh, they de they definitely show parts of that where dinosaurs are by train tracks and yeah, but but they're how, flying. I mean, how how did they get off of these? islands how do right. they get off of these certain areas and all of a sudden they're just roaming around did dinosaurs yep. learn how to how to fly planes did they learn how to how to row row boats yep. uh how did how did they get here um i think part five the, my favorite scene in part five at the very end is where there's this surfer and he's just surfing on this wave and all of a sudden you see this massive dinosaur and he is just like eyeing this surfer like he is going to attack and he's <laughs> going to kill. Him. That's what I thought part six was going to be. It's going to be a Godzilla type thing where we right. have not just one Godzilla who's running around. We have all of these dinosaurs. Somehow they're all here and blah, blah, blah. And we're going to find out that they're all here because there are certain people that want to take out 99% of the people in this earth so that they can control this, this earth, et cetera. I mean, there's so many areas that they could have gone. They could have right. went to, they didn't do any of that. It was just like, yeah, the dinosaurs are here, but Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go on, on my cell phone and just kind of, you know, text about it. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. I that's did like, good. I did like the one I did like in the, the fish one though, at the beginning when you see the fishermen on the ocean and yeah. they bring up that cage. I don't know if you remember that part. And then that great big dinosaur comes out of the, yeah, out of the yeah. water and eats the whole. It gets huge and it eats like the the net and it pulls the boat back. That I thought that was cool. I thought that was a good scene. Yeah, and it, and, and, and there, I wanted more of that. They never brought any more of that. Like, okay, what happens with that? Done? Does he just run in, in the uh, sea? Do that? <laughs> is the navy okay with that? Like, we have we have subs. We have things, you know, in the ocean. Like, isn't this a national security issue here? Yep. No, it's not. Good point. Because because it's under <laughs> Biden, it's 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 all good. You know, maybe maybe if we had a president like Donald Trump, maybe it would be different. Maybe they go and nuke these guys. Dinosaurs or something, but if it's Biden, he doesn't know what the heck is going on. It's like, yeah, they're just they're just here. We gotta let them through. We're letting people across our borders, so of course, why not let the dinosaurs in too, right? Well, you, you I know that you're looking for the humans to be getting, you know, the dinosaurs attacking the humans. They do get into that a little bit with as the story progresses, as as you know, like. But it was mostly these. Uh, Raptors, these ones that were laser guided raptors somehow, if you remember that part. Yeah. And that's where that girl controls them. And I thought that was kind of weird. She's like, wherever you point, they're like military grade raptors, apparently. And wherever you point the laser at, they focus in on it and they won't stop it going after whatever that laser points at. 
until they kill it. And I think there was three or four. I can't remember exactly how many there was. And that's where they have that big chase scene, basically. That's like a lot of the action of the movie is them, uh, the the heroes of it, or the main cast, whatever you want to call them, running away from these things. And what did you think of that part? Did you like that action scene? Because that is dinosaurs chasing humans and what you want to see. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. I don't think it was done right. You know, it just felt like too too forced. It was too like, ah, yeah, you know, we, we if we point if we point a laser beam over here, the dinosaurs are all going to go over there. Exactly. Right? It's yep. kind of like, ah, okay, all right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But, you know, they didn't really, I don't know. I don't know if that was really necessary. There were so many things in this film that weren't necessary. All you had to do was, this is like a zombie movie. Take the zombies out put the dinosaurs in and just say, you know what, people, now we have, look at what happened in the first movie and put Mm -hmm. that on on a global scale, okay? If there is a T-Rex and he's in your yard, if he's in your backyard, Rick, you know, forget about those bunnies that are trying to (laughs) get your bean plant and everything like that. That's the least of my worries. (laughs) That's the least of, if you see a T-Rex, don't move, right? (laughs) If you see raptors there, go and hide, lock your doors, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I wanted from this. Right. That not, great. not that, oh, yeah, they got it all figured out. Yeah, we just point this laser here, and all the dinosaurs are going to run over, <laughs> over into a corner. Yeah. I just I just didn't buy it. No, I just really did didn't you buy like it. The, now, the part I did like was kind of the black market scene where they're, where they're selling dinosaurs. They got dinosaur fighting. Do you remember that part? Yes. Yeah, I I, I like that, that part. part. I did. Okay. I just because I would see that that would be something that would happen in the real world. If there was dinosaurs ram, roaming around, there would be people catching them and fighting yeah, with. Right. Like I think that there would be like an uh, definitely would. Then they kind of hint on that that there's a big underground market for all of these dinosaurs, and that's kind of where that scene takes place. Is this well, underground market? Yeah. That's where they could have put the whole Dr. Fauci thing is to say, hey, we're we're making dinosaur soup. And because yep. of the dinosaur soup, everybody's getting sick. We got to give them shots. We got the COVID thing, et cetera. <laughs> and there's so many things that they could have done. But you don't just, want to you don't want no politics or anything. I don't. You're talking no, about no, you're Fauci. Right, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but that's but that's what took me out of the whole movie. And then that's that. And, and that's my fault. Right. I don't know if they purpose. I can't say that they purposely. Put him. I mean, it was. It's very coincidental. If they didn't intend to have a guy that looked just like Anthony Fauci, uh, it's very coincidental. And maybe that's right. my own fault. Because there's probably a lot of people out there who have no idea who, who Anthony Fauci is too. But I don't um, know, man. Very good. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> at, at at this point, I'm sure a lot of people do. But it was very interesting that they would even go with a character like that, right? To even put that character in there to have. And there's this. I don't know. I had a lot of issues with it, and I'm like, you know what? Like I've told you, man, I love to keep my fiction and my nonfiction separate, completely yeah, separate. And this, times. this just, I had a really hard time because I was trying because I love the characters from the first three films. So I wanted to, you know, say, okay, whatever, whatever, you guys, fine, okay, whatever. What is going to happen to these three characters, and how are they going to interact with Chris Pratt? Yep. That was the big thing. And when they first interacted with Chris Pratt, it was a letdown. I was yep. so let down because it wasn't like Chris Pratt knew who this guy was. And he's just like, I was going to bring that up. Why okay. was he even working for him? Like, why, why was he working for this mad scientist? Yeah. Kind of thing? Like I, that, I that, that threw yeah. me off. I was like, he would, he would not do the work he's doing there. Like it was weird. Like, was, I don't know. I, it, to me, it didn't fit that whole, I was like, why is he there? And I know, yeah, he's trying to, you know, help and keep an eye on things and all of that kind of thing. But yeah, I was really, when they met up, when he met up with the other characters from the first one, it was very, I agree with you. It was very uneventful. Like it just was, it was very like, hi. (laughs) No, I mean, mean, they have, they have a scene that takes place later on. That is a good scene where he talks about where he's like, yeah, I have read your book. And then he says, but it's, you know, it's like a, he didn't. He listened to the book, right? He didn't read yeah. it. So that was that was funny. That was awesome. And that's Chris, Chris Pratt. It just seemed like what happened. Like they had just such. I mean, those the, the main character from the first film and from and with Chris Pratt in the in the last couple films, the the chemistry should have been there. Like, was it not there? Was the right? I just feel like the writing was bad, and they had the agenda. They had the identity politics. 
they had an agenda with this movie to use Jurassic Park the way that they've used the latest uh, Marvel movies, the latest mm-hmm. Star Wars movies, which is why I don't, you know, I don't watch those now. And it just seemed like they did the same thing with this movie, with these Jurassic Park movies. Do they just want to ruin every franchise? Is that what they want to do? That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Yep, I was just talking to my neighbor about the Star Wars uh, franchise. He's a big, big Star Wars oh, fan, nice. and nice. and I I always He's ask probably people got that some is great rants on this. Oh, he yeah, I got I sent him on a I sent him on a tirade that a couple of evenings ago when I brought up Star Wars, and I I was like, what do you think of the newest ones? And he had a lot to say, and then I asked him about the spinoffs, and basically it came to the conclusion that he loved the Mandalorian, but all the other spinoffs. Uh, he didn't like very much, and he had a lot to say about him. He was really upset with they where they've taken okay. Star Wars. <laughs> but he did like so, Mandalorian, see, which and I'm in the same boat. I love Mandalorian. Yeah. I love that one with Baby Yoda and all of that. I thought they did that amazing. But for this new Boba Fett one, I I like the Sand People. Didn't like the Boba Fett one. Huh? I like I like it parts of it. I really liked it when Boba Fett was uh, with the Sand People. And they were, and he, they saved them. They were teaching them their ways, and you know that whole part, that those few episodes. I like that a lot. Um, but where it's going now, I don't know. It's kind of I'm losing interest with these speeder bikes that you know these <laughs> kids driving around oh, on these really the crappy Power look. Rangers. Well, yeah, they look. Yeah, yeah they're the like Power these Rangers. robot, half robotic people that want to be half cyborg, and their speeders look horrible. It looks like they made it like in ten minutes in the in the. You know the the where they make all the costumes and all the props and stuff. They're like, yeah, throw it out all together. We'll call it the speeder. I don't know. That's how I felt. I just I didn't like. I don't like that storyline. And then Obi Wan, I got so many. That'll be another show because I can rant on Obi One forever. And so I'm not a big fan of that. I loved it. Like I said, Mandalorian. Not a big fan of the other ones. Would and we're, we're talking movies. What do you think of those? Like, are you in the same boat with me, or do you, did you like any of the spinoffs? None of them. What do you? What are your thoughts? I kind of like I kind of like Boba Boba Fett. I didn't mind it. You know, it wasn't it wasn't that great. I didn't like the Power Ranger characters. It felt like <laughs> they were and, that's a good name for them. <laughs> they were like a, a combination of Antifa and and BLM. You know, it was just like they had no real reason to be there. There was no backstory. They just kind of showed up. They're kind of in. <laughs> invincible right it's just they, they never die <laughs> nobody cares about them or anything it has nothing to do with boba fett and i'll be <laughs> honest the biggest thing for boba fett with with me was the one where they showed luke skywalker right that was the best episode of that whole series very true and you know that was what i i just wanted more of that and then of right. course uh, Grogu just pretty much leaves Luke Skywalker. It's like, okay, well, there goes Luke Skywalker. We're never going to see him him again. Yeah. So, yeah, so the Boba Fett series was kind of disappointing. I did not watch the 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 Obi-Wan series. I, I oh. knew this because that was a Kathleen Kennedy thing. See, the Mandalorian was a David Filoni and, yep. a, Dave, and a John Favreau product so it's still in the clone wars people have seen the clone wars Mm -hmm. um if you've seen rebels it's still in that vein it is not a kathleen kennedy project when i learned two years ago that obi-wan was going to be a kathleen kennedy project man i was so sad because i knew what was going to happen and they did the same thing they created a character named Reva, a black mm-hmm. character, and they just wanted her to be the Superman. She was better than Darth Vader. I know. She was, she was yep. like the, this. <laughs> it was like you could take her out of the whole storyline, and nobody would care about that character. Nobody yeah. cares about the character. She was only there because she was black, and they wanted a black person in it. It had yep. nothing to do with Star Wars. Star Wars is not about black people. It's not about the identity politics. Star Wars is a great story, and if you stick to that story, nobody cares if you're black, if you're white. Nobody cares about any of, of nope. that yeah. stuff. Doesn't but mean they, they try to force us down our throat and say, you need to care about this person because she's, she's black. 
And when that, that's when it. You I mean, think, it was so yeah, horrible. when you think of Star Wars, who do you think of? You think of Darth Vader. He's the ultimate, besides the Emperor, but I mean, in the main, a lot of the stories, Darth Vader's the number one bad guy. And then you have Luke. You know, that's who you want to see a lot about. And yeah, so. And yeah, then Obi- it, yeah, yeah, I mean. It was a great story. It could have been such a great story. All you had to show was Darth Vader hunting down Jedis. Yep. And, and Obi Wan Kenobi protecting Luke Skywalker. There well, you guess go. what? It doesn't end up like that. It ha- nope. he it ends up with uh Leia. Leia actually outdoing Obi-Wan Kenobi in his own show. It's the yep. same thing with these uh these uh these grasshoppers outdoing <laughs> the dinosaurs in their own movie. It's the same stuff. It, it makes absolutely no sense. I don't know it, what they're doing, why they're doing it, but they're not doing it. Um, because Any justice, want- that's for no. sure. They're no. not. They're not doing the rest of the franchise. Now, what I did like about the new Jurassic Park, getting back to that one, we're kind of all over. But I did like that they had the characters from the first one in it. That that was really cool to me that they brought them back and they were part of the storyline. I thought they looked great. I thought you know for how many years it's been since the first Jurassic Park, and now I thought they looked great. I thought they acted great. I, I enjoyed their interactions. I just I was happy that they brought them back into the story. And I, so what did you think of that? Like that was a big selling point for me to want to go see it. Was that they were bringing back the original cast? Yep, yep. That was that was why I was so like I was um, so happy ab- uh, about this film. And then that's why I'm like, well, maybe my expectations were were too high. For it, you know, because yep. like, well, how can you how can you make this bad? How can it go wrong when you have the three characters from the greatest film of these mm-hmm. six movies or the five movies at, at at that time? How do you how do you mess that up? And they did. Right. Yep. I I I I'm, at least I'm in the, I'm not the only one that did not <laughs> enjoy it because now the ending now we got to get to the ending. The ending yep. bothered me to no end. I the ending I was just like this is. They copied the first one, basically, the fight scene. That the, like they switched the dinosaurs around. You have the T-Rex again or whatever. Maybe not the T-Rex, but whatever that big one's called. I yeah, can't yeah, remember yeah, what they called the it. T-Rex, but, but, yeah, that and then you had that one with the floppy hands. Yeah, like yeah, that one with the, 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 yeah, like okay. the floppy hands. I don't understand. It's almost like a turkey dinosaur. Yeah it, was like this, yeah, it was like this weird <laughs> thing with these gigantic hands, like claw. I don't know, what, whatever you want to call them. I don't know. I don't know what they were. Like, pause, I guess. Like, and then the way that the end when he just pushed, like, and if you remember that this is the part that killed me was when he just kind of walks up to the big like dinosaur and pushes him onto the spikes of the other one and kills the main dinosaur. And I was like, what? He just pushes him and kills him. Like, this is so bad. Like, it, and I just, what did you think of that part? I just the ending was made me laugh actually. Yeah, was, was that it like fight a, scene made me laugh? Like it really did. I was like, "Oh, this is so bad." <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. Uh, what, what type was it? Like a a force push or what? What was going? No, on? don't you remember? He just kind of, like they had a fight scene. Yeah, like they had a fight scene, and then and then it was go, and then the one dinosaur gets apparently knocked out. I, I thought like it's supposed to look like he died, but then he got knocked oh, out. Right. If I'm remembering, right. because the and then T-Rex, that's a T-Rex, yeah, yeah, T-Rex and is then, like the good guy and. Every he other is. movie except for the first one. Yeah, like the T Rex gets thrown and knocked out, and then this other—I can't remember the name of it, guys. I'm sorry, it's got a weird yeah, name. Yeah, I can't either. And can't but it's just—it's really big. It's even big. It's like the apex predator of dinosaurs. And then this, then the T Rex kind of like is getting a—he gets up, it starts attacking, and then this chicken feather thingy with big <laughs> turkey, paws, the turkey, turkey. Dinosaur. Yeah, he's kind of the hero of it. With it was really weird. I was just like. You couldn't have thought of a better ending than that, than the basically the dinosaur getting pushed and then killed, and like he gets stabbed, and I was like, wow. Yeah, I but, think the only go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just I'm kind of still thinking about it. Going, this is, it was so bad. Now, the only thing that I took away from that final fight scene was one of the things that one of the one of the main characters from the first movie said. It's like this is not a, a about us, and it showed me that these dinosaurs would rather fight each other Mm -hmm. than fight us, than fight people. And it's kind of crazy because, you know, that's how humans are too. 
you know, humans are like we're we fight each other. We kill each other more than any animal or anything oh, else for kills sure. us. You know what yep. I mean? So I mean, that was like that was a good thing, and that was good because it was from a character that I loved, and I forget his name. Um, but um, I know the put one that you hat too. on. He put that hat on. I was like, yes, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> and it was I wanted to love this movie, so I wanted to like this movie so much so badly because i love the characters from the first movie me too. and i just you know i just and i and i paid 30 bucks to to see it we streamed it on prime we watched it and i'm like man i want to like this movie so much but i don't know if if, if i want to watch it again if it's a good movie i'll watch it oh for over sure and over yep. you know what i mean even if it's just a couple months or a year from now or something like that but I don't know. I just I wanted to love this movie, and I just I just didn't. Can you see like you it. watching it again? Like, can you no. see you like sitting down, going, "I gotta watch the newest no. Jurassic Park again." No, mm-hmm. no. I I like I said. I put I watched it twice. Uh, that was enough for me. I thought maybe I'll give it a second chance. I'll kind of watch it again and see what I missed. I like I said. I did like the part that they were kind of showing the genetically modified, uh, great like uh, crops and the bugs and these gigantic grasshoppers. I like that aspect just because they, they're kind of touching in on what's going on in, in real life. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then, like you said, the grasshoppers kind of, it was a side note. And then it just, to me, it was really busy because you have, you're dealing with the grasshopper thing and the genetic modifying of them. You've got blue who gets her baby stolen along with the girl. So you got this whole thing going on where they're chasing the girl and trying to rescue blue, the, Blues baby, uh, well, I mean, baby. You haven't, you haven't talked about that girl that much either. She's basically a dinosaur. She's a yeah. half human, half dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it was really weird. Okay. Like I, they just kind of stuck all of these. To me, it just felt like they stuck all these stories in, and were kind of like, we just got to make it so busy. And I wish I was. I'm like you. I really think that if they would have simplified it down to dinosaurs have taken over most of the world. Uh, they're attacking humans and like in their own areas. I think like you said, with the zombie kind of thing, you know, you got your zombies, you got your humans. That's where the story should. And I think that if they would have attacked it from that way and went about it that way, where that's what, what the story was about was humans trying to even get along with dinosaurs and haven't trying to coexist with them and really right. dived into that. You could have brought in all the same characters. You could have brought except maybe except for Fauci. But you could have brought in all the other same characters and, you know, the pilot that made no sense. But you could have brought no the sense. main ones. Yeah, bring in the main yeah. ones and then the ones from the other movies and then kind of try. I don't know what the story would be. That's not my job. I'm not a script writer. Maybe but like I think planet, that would. Like a planet of, of the apes type thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I think they could have done a lot with that. And I wish they would have veered away with the dinosaurs with all the CGI and they would have done what the first one did. Which was kind of bringing the robotic ones when it was when it was necessary, and because I don't think they used any robotics, I'd be very surprised if they used any robotic dinosaurs in this new one. I think it was it seemed to be CGI to me through all of it, and then that's where I think they lose some of that realism from the first one. I think the dinosaurs in the first one, Greg, were amazing. I still yeah. think that. Yep. 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 And, and maybe I think there may have been one scene where two of the three main characters from the first movie. They were like hidden. They were like ducking down from the T Rex. Right. There may have been one scene where they actually used maybe at least a puppet, like a real T Rex type puppet that was kind of hunting or searching for them. That was the only scene that brought me back to the very first film. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's what I wanted. Like the whole movie should have been more about that, where these humans are being hunted and mm-hmm. they're hiding. From the dinosaurs. Why the heck can't you make a whole movie just about that? I think that would be a great movie. I do. I think that they could do something with that. And I keep yeah. thinking it like, and I'm like, kind of like probably the same thing that you thought. Like every time you watch a movie, there you that you know when you see the as the movies go on, you see part one, part two, part three. That's what they're they're guiding it to. At least I always thought that it's like okay, eventually all of these dinosaurs are going to get out in the world. They're going to be unstoppable. They're breeding, even though it's kind of weird how they started breeding on their own. They're not <laughs> supposed to, but whatever. Let's ignore okay. that. 
Sure. We'll ignore that. Even that was a hole I found too. That they started breeding on their own. My but, body, my choice. I well, can, yeah, I can make exactly. my own baby. I don't need no man. I can make my own baby here. Basically, <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah, and so okay, I'll go with them on that. But okay, I, every, why they're not? Dinosaurs. Yeah, they're, why not have this epic uh, movie where it's the humans and the dinosaurs? I think that would be like you said, Godzilla, but with many Godzillas. Right. That and have the great. you know the militaries trying to stop them. There, I I don't know the story, but I think that that would have been a lot better than kind of where they went off with this because I don't even know where they're going to go from this one. Yeah, like, I mean the only thing I, I do want to say one thing about the actual numbers is I looked at the the worldwide numbers. This is um, worldwide box office of all time. This is at number sixty three right now. This has ninety um, nine hundred and twenty five million. So it'll probably reach one billion. People are liking it then. Yeah, they like their dinosaurs. It didn't do it didn't do as well as some of the other previous ones, but you know. It's holding yeah, I think well it's couldn't it be though that people just I think Jurassic Park they could do pretty much any movie with dinosaurs and they're gonna get well, that core Here's here's the interesting thing about these numbers is when they when they adjust the, the numbers for inflation Gone with oh. the Wind is probably still one of the greatest movies. It's probably still the the worldwide box office. What is that? Is this, does it tell you what that one's made since uh, like gone, gone with the Wind? I I couldn't even no, imagine. Yeah, I mean that's it's probably not even on this list. But if if I were to pull up the list that would just for inflation, it would probably still be <laughs> still be at the number one. Gone with the and Wind. That's God, number. that's an old one. <laughs> Holy. Yep. That's a long movie too. I remember. Okay, yeah. That's like almost four hours. I'm I'm still trying to get my wife to watch that movie. I'm like, this is the great. You have to see this movie. And never watched someday. it. Oh, you gotta see it. You gotta. See no, it. I have. See I'm it. saying that your wife's never watched. Yeah, it. Yeah, no, she's never watched it. Uh, but uh, but I have it. I got the the whole the whole Blu-ray here. And one day, one day, it's gonna happen. One of our oh. date nights. She'll yeah, have it. a date night. I mean, I don't know. Is it, she? I think she would like it. I mean, I. I Maybe I, mean, I don't know. I don't think she would like Scarlet. I don't, I don't think she likes some of, some of the characters, and she may like Clark Clark Gable. I mean, I don't know what woman wouldn't like Clark Gable in that's that true. movie. But she's not. She doesn't like war. She doesn't like things like that. And it's crazy that I would even like it because it is kind of um, semi based on real things that happened during our civil war. So right. it seems like a movie that I would not like because it's too too close to real things that that happen. Um, and you I, don't like it, and like you said, you like your fiction. Like you you right. don't like, yeah, you're not big on the real life uh, movies, right? Right. Oh, okay, um, that's that's cool. I would w just want to say that Jurassic Park, the first one, um, is for all time is at number forty forty one. So for that, for the uh, the newest one to be at number sixty three. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. That Jurassic Park, the first movie, has made more money. Well, yeah, I, I <laughs> hope so. For thinking that, but. I hope so too. So, but so that I already know. But let's give this. Let's give Jurassic Park. This is the newest one, World uh, World Dominion. Let's give it like I don't know what we're gonna rate it on. Like five chicken dinosaurs with big paws. <laughs> 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 that that's the star of the movie at the end because he just basically can't use these paws, but. He pushes another dinosaur. Bad guy kills him all over. Uh, how many of these chicken dinosaurs do you give this? Five out of five. Out of out of five, based on on the actors that are in there, because it had all three of the people that I love from the first movie, and because I'm a Chris Pratt fan, I still have to give it a three. Three out of a five. Three. All right, that's fair. I was gonna. I, I, I'm I'm towing between three and four. Yeah, and yeah, so I, me too. Actually, I'm kind of thinking about it, and I, I mean, I wish, I wish they went in a different direction. I, I'm gonna have to go with maybe three because I just don't, I couldn't get over how bad the dinosaurs to me looked. I'm sure other people are gonna look at it and think I'm crazy, and and they look amazing. I just, for some reason, that was the first thing I thought of when that movie started, and I wow. saw the dinosaurs after like five minutes. I just remember going, these look so different than the first ones. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that movie just to see how the dinosaurs look because I didn't have any issues with that. All right, well, you, you gotta let me know. It could be me. It probably is. I mean, if we're being honest, it's probably me. But I just found that the 
I've never seen dinosaurs in any of the Jurassic parks that remind me of, of how well the first ones looked. For some reason, I don't know if they just – it was the more, like you said, the they were using more animatronics or better different lighting because in, you know, in the first one, it was a lot more dark most of the time. Mm-hmm. And so I think that might have had something to do with it. I mean, in the first one, there was a couple scenes with the Triceratops. It was out in the field in the sun. and But that was, that was another animal. That was another animatronic. It was another puppet. So it looked amazing. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah, I'll be curious to see. I mean, and I, it's probably me. I. But I just. But even my wife, though, after I pointed it out to her, and then halfway through the movie, I remember her saying to me, "She was kind of like ruining it for all." Of yeah, them. Thanks, I'm ruining right? it for Thank everybody. You. But yeah, even my wife, for her to turn to me and say, "You know, you're kind of right. These dinosaurs don't look as good as the first <laughs> one." So it's not just. I don't think it's just going to be me. But I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's a it's a Jurassic Park movie, but. I think that, I don't know. I think they could have done better, in my opinion. I think they could have done a lot more with what they had. Yeah, well, uh, I think of all of these Jurassic Park movies, Jurassic World in 2015 is uh, it, it's at number seven, so it's made 1.6 billion dollars. Wow! Um, and that's you know, and that's more than any of the other ones, and that's from 2015. And that could be more of the curiosity. Just it could be. It could be. Yeah. yeah. It's just. It's yeah. Like this. This Jurassic World. Jurassic World Dominion. I don't even know what the name makes sense. Like, Dominion. I just, yeah. Dominion, yeah. I don't, because I'm they're like, not dominating anything. <laughs> no. Like I mean, I. I guess it's we're supposed to believe they've taken over the world kind of thing, but it didn't feel like that in the movie. No. It kind of. No. It didn't. It kind of felt like the dinosaurs were living with humans, and they were. I. I don't know. It, and there weird. were these other, there were the grasshoppers that were, it was more of a grasshopper <laughs> d- dominion movie. Yeah. It, it was like the, it, yeah. No. So, yeah, I'm glad that, well, see, I'm glad you got on here. I promised you guys that we would get Greg on here to talk about it. I hope I didn't ruin it for anyone that's huge <laughs> Jurassic Park fans. I mean, I'd love to hear in the chat if you guys, anyone has seen it, uh, what your guys' thoughts are. Like, am I, me and Greg, totally off. Like, do you guys think we're crazy and it's a great movie and, it follows the storyline perfect, or do you guys think more like what we're thinking that they could have done more, and it was kind of agenda driven and scattered? That's kind of where I'm looking at it from. Yeah, you know. So I'm curious to think what other people will think. But where are we out of time here, Greg? Oh my God, the hour just flew by. As usual. As Thank you, usual. My friend. All right. Thank you so much, Greg, for being here. Thank you guys for being here and uh, joining me this evening. Uh, have a safe weekend. I will be back here Monday night, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And there is a round table. I'm going to be having like four guests on. So please check it out, guys. Check out Greg at the Great Stage on YouTube. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care.